Hello, and welcome to another episode of Royalty Talks. I am here today with my special guest, actress and disability advocate, Lolo Spencer, who is also the star of the upcoming Disney animated series, Firebuzz. Hey, hey. <laughs> how are you? I'm good. How about yourself? I am wonderful. You know, I'm, I'm surrounded by my aura right here. These are my favorite colors. I'm wearing my favorite colors. I'm looking good. I'm feeling good. You are killing it. <laughs> you are. I am literally feeling so less than right now. I'm it's like, a hoop I, for me because I don't have any hoop earrings. <laughs> so I wish I had that ensemble. Um, oh, you got to get some hoops, girl. I'm going to go to the corner hair store and get some. There you go. That's <laughs> exactly. Get them for $2. You'll be good. Period. So let's just get right into it. I definitely want to talk about just your transition because I know you were in the, the sex sex lives of college girls, right? Yes. In HBO. So you went yes. from sex lives to Disney. <laughs> you know, yes. how, how, how was that transition, if you could talk about that? Well, I think the interesting uh, part about that is I'm still on Sex Lives. So Sex Lives season two comes out this November. Um, and I think uh it it it's interesting right because sex lives is very adult young adult content whereas fire buds is for you know preschoolers and so the transition isn't wasn't um necessarily a challenge right because you know i've been a young little girl at one point in my life and i also attended college so it was always just more so about finding those commonalities of uh, my experiences and infusing those energies, those uh, moments and experiences and those memories into the characters that I play. Um, and so, yeah, I, I don't think that there was really too much of a transition there. Um, it was just more so just being focused on just the character at you know any given time whether i was recording for firebuds or filming for sex lives and i love how you kind of say you incorporated some of your qualities and you as a child and it's growing up in your characters we're definitely going to get back to that topic in a few minutes um but just quick this curiosity where did you go to school at uh what college mm -hmm. oh i went to cal state university northridge so csun Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Cool. I've never been, but <laughs> yes, it's, it's, in it's the West like the Southern California, like in the LA area. All right. Well, you know, LA is my second home. So, okay. I could definitely dig with that. Nice. And just going back to school and just talking about this character. I mean, Jasmine is your character on Fire Above. So where are some qualities in Jasmine that may resonate with you or remind you of yourself when you were a kid? You know, Jazzy is, um, she's a very creative young girl. Um, and that was something that really resonated with me, just kind of her overall creativity and imagination. When I was growing up, I was always playing around in my grandmother's clothes and her jewelry and my mom's high heels and just, putting on fashion shows and playing business. That was always a thing of like playing business with my cousins. And it's actually interesting because um, I'm in the process of writing a book right now as well. And I'm basically given the whole story of growing up and I didn't even realize like, I've been playing a boss since day one, I always had this vision and fantasy for myself of like carrying around a briefcase, having, you know, people on my team, kind of delegating tasks to people. I've always been that way. And so Jazzy has that same spirit, that same creative spirit of like creating the world that she wants to see, creating the world that she wants to be a part of. And so I was able to resonate with that because I was the same kind of kid. I was building things. I used to build clubhouses in my backyard out of cardboard boxes. My mom would get concerned at a certain point, but it was like, mom, I want to build my own house. And so now fast forward being an adult, I'm like looking for houses now, right? So it's really interesting to be able to kind of uh, revisit the fun and the excitement and the innocence 
that um, only a child has, right? Through mm -hmm. the lens of Jazzy. So that's where, where her and I really um, connect and make sense. And I like the creativity aspect that you were speaking about just between the character and just you as a child. So just reflecting back on that and following up, did you always know that you wanted to be an actress or just be in the industry as a child? Or did you have like another creative outlet you were looking into? I'm 100%. A lot of this does not make sense. You know, a lot of people always ask like, Lolo, how did you get into this? And mm -hmm. what did you do to get this role or that role? And sometimes I feel a little strange answering that question just because mm -hmm. I know my answer mm -hmm. is never like a traditional way of, like it wasn't like, oh, I went to this acting class and this agent saw me in the class and then this happened. Or I knew somebody who knew none, but that is just not my story. A lot of my story is just happenstance. And honestly, like what they say when um, opportunity meets preparation, like I've always just had those moments. And so when those two collide, I've just always been ready. So I did it. I always love speaking to people who are just so excited about what they do. And this is like yeah. so passionate where it just really doesn't feel like work and just kudos to you for just kind of just taking a step out there. And even though it seems like I'm a little, I'm afraid, like a lot of people out there doing what I'm doing, but you know what, I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. So that's always very admirable. And I think, you know, if more of us did that, then, then, then we'll be cool. So Yeah, thank you so much. Yes, of course. Now let's get back to what you were talking about earlier with your roles and how just each character resonates with you. So when it comes to accepting roles, would you say each character you play is intentional? You know what? As much as I can have control of that, yes. I mean, I've definitely have rejected roles because for some reason it just didn't resonate with me. Maybe I didn't like the storyline. Maybe I didn't like the way the character was written. Uh, maybe I didn't like the, the, the dialogue or just how the project in general is written. So yeah, everything is very intentional. Um, and so I always try to just look for a role that's for one, going to be authentically representative of people with disabilities, first and foremost. Um, that's like super duper crucial to me. Um, and then also where I can show a level of humanity to the character, um, where it's more about who the character is rather than their story be, being centered around their disability, right? Mm -hmm. um, so those are the things that I really do pay attention to. And then just as an actress, just really wanting to do something that I feel like I would enjoy playing. And enjoy playing doesn't mean necessarily like, I always want it to be fun or like, no, like genuinely, do I really want to tell this story? Mm -hmm. um, do I feel like I am the best person for the role? Like there's been times where roles have come my way and I'm like, this sounds great, but this isn't quite something that I feel like I'm resonating with. Mm -hmm. However, I do know that there are other people who I feel I could play this role much better. And if I know that person personally, then I'll give that suggestion. Um, or, you know, I'll, I'll tell my agents like, hey, let them know like it was a great story. I just don't resonate with it. But for them to please continue to do their work to search for authentic representation in a disabled character. Absolutely. And you talk so much about diversity and this representation and especially this your advocacy with um, disability. So can you just speak on that briefly, just how important is representation to you? Representation is everything, you know, um, it's important for every person to see at least a little bit of who they are represented in media and entertainment. Because in my personal opinion, I feel like the entertainment and beauty industries are the ones that shift culture, they shape culture, and they drive how people respond to each other, how people view each other, and how people feel about each other. So when people with disabilities 
aren't represented in those conversations or they're represented incorrectly, then it does a disservice on how the rest of the world perceives our community. So it's important for people who are adamant and have access to these opportunities to really showcase disability for the humanity of who we are. And then especially when you're at an intersection like myself, where I'm a black woman with a disability, that's even more imperative, right? Because now we're going beyond just disability culture. Now we have to tap into black culture and what is the relationship between disability and being black? That's a whole other beast to tackle within itself. However, um, if my existence in a character um, adds to the narrative of what we want as Black people with disabilities or Black women with disabilities, then that's everything to me. And I don't want us to be represented in any old kind of way. And I've been very vocal with the projects that I've been a part of to say, hey, that is not an authentic thing that a Black woman with a disability would say, or that's not authentic to disability, that's not authentic to the Black culture, and having those conversations. And luckily, I've been blessed to even have the freedom to have those conversations with the creators of the projects that I've been a part of, and them being open to listening to me and actually implementing the notes because they too want to be sure that they're representing all communities correctly. Well, from what you do share, I definitely appreciate you just being transparent about your story and your journey and just using that to just be an inspiration to other young girls, well, just young people in general who may be in your position. So kudos and congratulations to you for that. Thank and, you. Yes, of course. Now, I just want to um, get back briefly on the show. Like, what do you hope that kids and parents would get out of Firebug? Like, what, what values and what kind of reaction are you hoping that would come from the audience? My overall hope um, is that families and kids will start to accept that our world is truly a very diverse world. And when they see others, um, people from different communities, different backgrounds, different cultures, that there is no longer this shock, right? Or this unknowing anymore that Firebuds could be the representation of all of these kids from all these different backgrounds right. coming together to simply have fun and want to save the world and be eager about helping each other and helping your fellow person. And so I think that's probably like the biggest takeaway that I hope families and kids get. So when the kids do act and start to interact with each other, that they don't have to only rely on the ones that look just like them, that they can befriend and help others um, and help their community in a way that is um, just truly helpful and empowering to them. Because once the kids get it, then we can rest assured that that generation as they grow older will hopefully create a, a better world each time. It's all about laying the seed. Yeah. Laying the seed. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Just planting that seed, laying that seed down. So that way kids, cause that's the thing, that's the benefit that kids have is a majority of the time, they don't have all of the walls and the blinders and the trauma and the you know discrimination issues that as adults we tend to experience especially if you're a person of color you have different gender or whatever the case may be um they don't have that they just turn up like they're just in their own little world turning up so it's good to plant that seed now while they don't have to feel rejected before the world starts rejecting them in weird ways, right? So yeah. I, I that that's what I what I'm hoping for for sure. Um oh girl um let me see what makes me a royal woman I would say 
Um, what makes me a royal woman is my ability to be my whole heart itself. Um, approaching every day with the intention to maximize life and maximize my experiences. Um, and going into every day knowing that God, the universe is working for me and not against me and really keeping those affirmations in my mind at all times and just living, living my best life as Lil Duval would say. <laughs> Shout out to Lil Duval. Well, that Shout out to Lil Duval, who's well, that experiencing life as a person with a disability right now because of his accident. Mm -hmm. But luckily, he's in a space where he will be able to heal and and get back to to being uh, the comedian that he is. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for just gracing the space, being on Royalty Talks and just sharing your story. I am so excited to have you. It was such a pleasure to speak to you. Yeah. Of course, if you're watching this interview, please subscribe to Royalty Magazine. You see it right here. And please, Lolo, let everyone know how they can follow you, follow your journey and what you're doing. Yes, yeah, so you can follow me on Instagram at it's Lolo Love, I T S L O L O L O V E. Um, you can also visit a lifestyle brand that I just launched called Live Solo. Um, it's a lifestyle brand dedicated to young adults with disabilities where we are sharing tips and hacks and tricks on how to live a life of independence and self-empowerment as a person with a disability. So you can visit that website at www.livesolo.co. That's L-I-V-E-S-O-L-O dot C-O. Um, you can follow the Lifestyle Brands social media pages at Live Solo Now, L-I-V-E-S-O-L-O-N-O-W across all platforms, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Facebook. And yeah, look out for Firebuds premiering tomorrow. Um, very excited about that. And then Sex Lives of College Girls season two premiering in November. Yes, and we'll have a follow-up interview about that. And of course, yes. get up on Good. Disney Plus, my Disney Plus suppliers. Hey, here we go. All right, thank you, everybody. And of course, with that being said, please follow Royalty Magazine at Royalty Mag, R-O-Y-A-L-T-E-E -E, on Instagram, on TikTok, and of course, RoyaltyMagazine.com. Until next time, see you later. Bye, y'all. <laughs>